uh, protests as they continue across our viewing area. I'm Morgan Norwood from Durham, ABC 11 Eyewitness News. Dewan, we'll toss things back to you. All right, Morgan, thank you. And we'll go ahead and check back with you in a second. I want to go back to our chopper 11 uh, high in the sky in downtown Raleigh. As Morgan was in, 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 in the midst of her interview, a lot of you were watching on the right-hand side of your screen. You saw a, a large crowd running. And we do believe that, that police uh, at, at the intersection of Cabarrus and, and Salisbury were, again, firing uh, smoke grenade cannons at the crowd and that's probably why you saw all those folks running uh, you're, you're now seeing them march some of them down Cabarrus toward um, that's that's actually right adjacent to the Raleigh Convention Center and just one block up they'll end up hitting the Red Hat Amphitheater as well as Pool's Diner and wedged in between Pool's Diner and Red Hat is the Raleigh Police Station they do have a precinct down there as well and we're, we're also seeing a, just a large police presence as well as this crowd continues to advance uh, from what we can tell largely with no agenda whatsoever, just kind of making their way, milling their way around downtown Raleigh. And they have been uh, largely peaceful for... Uh, the remainder of the of just the, the, the duration, if you will, of the entire day. Again, this is right in front of the Raleigh Convention Center at the intersection of uh, Cabarrus and Salisbury. And just in between that parking deck and the convention center, that crowd is beginning to advance as we have Chopper 11. And again, that, that green wall there, that, that's Pool's Pies. It's right adjacent to Pool's Diner by famous Raleigh chef Ashley Christensen. And to the right-hand side of your screen, uh, which is a little bit out of view, that's right had amphitheater. Police officers uh, parked their car right there at Cabarrus and McDowell right next to there. There's an Enterprise rental car. Uh, and again, at the beginning of the day, we had not heard from downtown. Uh, we have not heard in downtown Raleigh any police block off any streets. But as this group has grown in numbers, as this group has become a little bit more uh, fluid, if you will, we have seen police begin to block off streets. Again, you see officers there in the blue, uh, as well as officers in black and tactical gear advancing as the crowd begins to move toward them. Uh, we had only seen just a couple of exchanges with uh, smoke grenade canisters back and forth with the crowd, but you see the crowd maintaining somewhat of a distance as the police, as Raleigh police, begin to uh, tread backwards as they head back towards their police station. Uh, just incredible images that we're witnessing right now in downtown Raleigh. Again, this is Cabarrus and uh, Salisbury where we're seeing a lot of this. Uh, this is something that this is something that we necessarily weren't necessarily uh, uh, expecting as organizers were hoping that this protest uh, wasn't going to be a march, that it was going to maintain its, 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 its size right there on the steps of the Wake County Courthouse. But again, we are seeing this group uh, continue to advance and Raleigh police doing their best to maintain distance. Uh, we also heard from Wake County Sheriff Gerald Baker uh, earlier today, just, just past six o'clock, saying that his staff was not enforced minded, but rather safety first. Uh, there was another member of the media asking him if he was at all concerned uh, that anything in Raleigh would look a lot like what we've seen in Minneapolis or in, in other parts of the country or even down in Atlanta. Uh, Sheriff Baker is saying that he was concerned, but at the same time, he would be prepared. Um, and, and he ended up admitting that his officers were, uh, deputies rather, were inside the, uh, the, the sheriff's department there, uh, the, the, the sheriff's office there, uh, ready and prepared should anything need to, to happen. Uh, we also, before we want to go back to Morgan, if we can, uh, Governor Roy Cooper uh, had, had tweeted earlier today his thoughts on George Floyd and what he says that so many others who should be alive right now. People are angry, frustrated, and sad, and I am too. If we don't force our communities toward accountability and action, then we haven't learned anything. The protests around the country offer a space for people to make their voices heard, but they must happen without violence and further loss of life. It's time we have the difficult conversations needed to stamp out racism and end these unjust killings. We do yes, want to go back really now to Morgan to Norwood, like, who is on the ground for us. Oh my God, and Vera, awesome. Morgan, you just spoke with some folks who they mentioned the talks that they're having to have at this young age. Uh, it's just past 8 like, o'clock. The group has kind of dwindled in size, but they are mentioning at at 9 o'clock. Update us on what you're able to share. Yeah, Dewana, I had briefly five minutes or so to kind of digest 
um, that dialogue that I had um, with a couple of those adults and the children as well. Um, you could hear the father talk about the hard conversations that he had to have um, with his son about um, what police brutality is, what that means. Um, and how you move past that. Um, he also talked about how this was an example uh, to his son. You know, the peaceful assembly, the protest. Um, getting your message heard and doing so peacefully uh, and just making sure that you're making your demands in a way that they can be digested. So, um, you know, these are really telling conversations. And, and for many of the protesters, they feel like it's unfortunate that they have to continuously and repetitively have these conversations with each other and then also their young children and then also with those in which we hold accountable. So, you know, messages like what we heard about five or ten minutes or so ago is what we're going to continue you to hear, um, you know, all afternoon long, uh, BIPOC has really been the heartbeat of the protest. They've been zipping up and down uh, downtown, back and forth from here to the police department, just trying to get their message across. Um, not only are they angry and frustrated with what's happening uh, over in Minnesota or up in Minnesota, um, they also want to see a level of change here in Durham on the ground. So, uh, again, this this really is... it's. I'm trying to put this into to words, but it's something that you really can't describe uh, when you just kind of think about the level of passion and everything that they have. So um, we do know that they will be assembling here uh, shortly, about 8.30 or 9 o'clock. They already have the waters and everything stacked up. It, again, it's pretty empty right now, but that's because they plan to come back uh, in just a few minutes. We were down at the police department uh, earlier where they um, kind of disassembled and, and dispersed from there. And one of the things that one of the... Uh, organizers was talking about Skippy, he did say, you know, I, he can't speak for Durham police. He anticipates that this is going to be a peaceful protest, and we've heard that word all day long, all evening long, but he said that he can't speak for Durham police. He doesn't know that they're going to get agitated, but what he did say was that he expects everyone who participates today to, to, to keep it casual, to keep it chill, to keep it passionate, make sure your message is being heard, um, make sure it's one of encouragement, but also make sure that your demands are being heard as well. So again, it is a very calm scene, but we hope uh, and what the protesters hope is that it will continue to stay that way. So again, we know that they will be gathering here at nine o'clock. We plan to be there for that. Uh, but for now, I want to go ahead and send it back to Dewan. And uh, Morgan, I, I do want to stick with you just for one quick moment. Our viewers, they're watching you in Durham. They're also watching the split screen of Chopper 11 in Raleigh, a, a stark contrast in Raleigh downtown than what we're seeing in downtown Durham. You spend a lot of your time throughout the week in downtown Durham. Is it, can you speak to anything about the tone or the pulse of, of folks who you've had a chance to speak with all week long as, as, they're, as they're trying to wrap their mind and their head around what they saw? in Minneapolis and, and the, the racial injustice they're, they're fighting. Yeah, Dewan, it, it, it's a lot of uh, a lot of hurt, you know. I, I, you know, it's hard for them to even explain the level of hurt that they feel. And they want justice. They want things. They want, you know, they want action, and they want it now. And it, it's really urgent for them to have that um, during these protests. I will say one one thing that I was talking with the gentleman about a few minutes ago. What I have seen, you know, throughout these protests throughout the evening, is that we're seeing everyone from different walks of life. You know, old, young. Uh, the children just a second ago, uh, different races, uh, age groups. And so that's one of the, the beautiful things that even the, those protesters that we spoke with were talking about because that's how you amplify the message. That's how you get some level of understanding. And that's really where the hope is for them. So um, there, we're, it's, it's a place of learning. You know, you're teaching them what you expect. You're teaching them what unity looks like. You also teach them what strength is. And that's exactly the message that I've been gathering uh, from these protesters. And that really has been the heartbeat uh, of the Durham community is the fact that we are so diverse, that we do have people from different walks of life, different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different religions. And, and what we're seeing today is that everyone is coming together, not only to learn, but to, uh, also to hold, um, you know, officials and, and, and systems um, that have oppressed, um, you know, different races and religions accountable um, as a whole. And Morgan, I do want to ask you, when, when, when you first arrived here uh, in this area, you spent a considerable amount of time in Fayetteville. I don't know if you've had a chance to, to, to catch up with our Akila Davis or uh, Michael Lozano, but that, that market house right down there in downtown Fayetteville has caught fire. Uh, we've seen a lot of people congregate there. 
uh, to, to, to express their, their pain, their hurt, their frustration. As someone who spent a considerable, a considerable amount of time in downtown Fayetteville, can you speak to just what that means? Yeah, Dewan, um, that, that, that hurt, you know, personally, even even looking at it. I mean, from, from a perspective of, I, I understand the hurt that everyone else is is feeling so um i i get it but also uh, just to get back to your question about the significance of the market house this has been a discussion even down in fayetteville i've covered stories on it for the last you know three, five, ten years, um, you know, there's been some push to get the market house taken off of the seal, to get it off of the logo, and that's because it's long been understood that the market house, aka the slave market house, is where uh, slaves had been sold, um, and so that is, a, a, it's, it's a place of, um, trying to figure out how to how to put this but it, it's a symbol uh, of, of unrest you know it, it really unearths and unpacks a lot of uh, some of the the negative history that Fayetteville has so um, it, it I, I can say that it didn't necessarily surprise me that that was going to be a target but again um, you know that just kind of gives you some context of why um, you know you see the windows blown out why it, it did catch fire that is because you know this has not been a, this is not a new discussion and so when you have situations like what happened in Minneapolis and what I've been hearing from the protesters even down in Fayetteville um, you know when you look at the market house it really just unearths and brings back and bubbles up a lot of that rage uh, and a lot of the suppressed feelings the emotion, the anger, the hurt, the oppression um, that many people have felt um, over the past decades, centuries. Um, and so that really gives you an idea uh, of what that market house um, contextualizes and, and symbolizes. Dewan. Morgan Norwood live first in downtown Durham. Morgan, thank you so much. want to get it right back over to Joel Brown. And Joel, as I'm tossing it over to you, uh, what you can't see right now is Chopper 11 uh, in downtown Raleigh, just on the intersection uh, there next to the Wake County Justice Center. Uh, we saw some folks in the crowd as soon as we took this shot appearing to be swag surfing uh, in the middle of the crowd and, and sprinkled throughout we see a raleigh police cruiser as well as just over uh, probably a little bit less uh, somewhere between a, a dozen and two dozen raleigh police officers you've made your way down from uh, the, the old capital to uh, another part of fayetteville street update us with what you see and exactly what you're hearing tonight yeah, you know exactly where I am right now, Devon. I'm right in front of the Raleigh Avenue Student Center, the Old Wake County Courthouse, right behind us. Uh, we're on Fayetteville Street, but as protesters are saying right now, whose street? Our street. They have taken over at least the 300 block at this point, covering the, uh, the county courthouse steps. Uh, you talked about having a better view from Chopper 11. I can hear Chopper 11, and I can certainly see different groups running back and forth from something. Hey, how are you? One person who has a better idea on the ground of what things look like is Greer Webb. Greer Webb is one of the young organizers of this. He's a, a member of uh, Young Americans Protest, one of the coalition, uh, one of the groups in the coalition who helped put this together. Greer, I'm just coming to you first because I know you were coming from that direction of Davie and Fayetteville. What are you seeing as far as interaction between demonstrators and police? Yes, it's very standoffish. I mean, everything has managed to stay nonviolent for now. And I think it was a successful day overall. We definitely got some people attention but it's definitely reaching a fever pitch here in Raleigh uh, people are being peaceful for the most part it looks like many police officers are in riot gear there's been no physical interaction that I've seen so far there have been rumors of tear gas earlier today but from my perspective things have been very nonviolent. and for us I see I feel like this coalition is very proud of who we brought out today from Raleigh and the surrounding areas all right, thanks, Hold on for me one second, sir. I'm talking to these folks here. This is Kimberly McTeary. She is with Save Our Sons. Uh, she's also a member of Raleigh Pact, who is one of the more vocal organizations in this city when it comes to police accountability and, 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 and a, a resistance against uh, police brutality. First off, Kim, I haven't talked to you since the George Floyd video. What was your take, and why did you come out here today? Well, I think um, when we talk about George Floyd, we have to talk about what is going on across this nation and also in Raleigh, North Carolina. We cannot say that this is just a Minnesota issue. This is a culture, and this is definitely why we are here tonight, to talk about the issues of every black male who is subjected to this kind of behavior, and we have to change that. Right here on the streets, to legislation, to the White House. Kimberly, you've been watching this 
protest play out. You know, Dawn. Dawn's been on the steps for a couple of hours now. Uh, she was hoping that this would stay on the courthouse steps, but she was free to say, look, I can't control. There's a lot of groups out here. Are, are, are you concerned as more people join up and, and with different motivations uh, and, 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 and different willingness to go out and perhaps talk about it? Well, you know what I say is that I don't think we would be here today if we didn't have the react. This is reactionary. Because we have to focus on what has happened throughout the years that we've been here for 400 years. We've been begging, pleading, and asking for no violence against our communities. And this is what it looks like when we have to come and stand. And so I'm in great hope that this will stay peaceful. We're hoping that we will maintain control of our crowd. But as we all know, if we can't control us, we certainly can't control the police that constantly kill our men. Greer, what about you? Yes, I agree. Like I said, it's managed to stay pretty peaceful so far. And I hope that that continues into the night as perhaps more people go um, go home, more people are joining. But this seems to be the central location where black people, young and old, are getting out their grievances, where they're saying, you know, we're not making requests anymore. We're making demands. We're doing it in a peaceful way. There's no way you cannot hear us anymore. It's been a great turnout. Black community, the Latinx community, the LGBTQ plus community, and white folks. I'm super proud of Raleigh and the Triangle community for coming out together, together, lifting each other up. In the midst of two pandemics, racism and coronavirus, we are together and forever united as a nation. And we've got to get to a point where that becomes more widespread. Greer, I appreciate you. I know you were heading out. We'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Kimberly, just one more question before I let you go, because I didn't get to talk to you about the diversity piece in the crowd. I talk to you a lot. Uh, off the record, um, not everything goes on television that, that, that you and I speak about. But I know one of your concerns through the many years that I've known you is not having enough people outside of black people directly affected by the issues that you care about coming on to the issue and, and, and talking about it as loudly and vocally as you do. But then you see this crowd today and, 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 and so many different colors, white folk, black folk, brown folk. Just your reaction. Well, I think this is a picture of heaven on earth. I think when we start unifying as humans first, we cannot stand back. And, and our counterparts, our allies, everybody has to speak up. Silence is brief to consent. And we cannot allow people to sit back and watch what we go through and not stand in the gap with us. So we're very proud of every race, every color, every creed coming out tonight to say that we believe in justice as a whole. And thank you so much for standing with us today. Save our sons and rally packs. Kimberly, thank you. Be safe. I would get closer, but I'm socially distant. They want me to toss it back, but I will let. They want me to toss it back, but I'll let you uh, next time we come out. Do I can't speak. Yes, you can. Absolutely. Yeah, you certainly can talk. Absolutely. What's your name, sir? Kabir. I'm gonna talk to Kabir Braxton. Why did you come out today? I came out today. Why did you want to talk? We're live on TV, sir. Why did you want to come out? I came out in solidarity and unity with all the people that came out here today because this is just, this just didn't start happening. This has been going on, but it's just, get, it's just getting viral now because of technology. This is going back, okay? Way, way back, okay? Way, way, way back. This ain't just start happening. You got these here police that you hire, okay? They have... Uh, Klansman mentality, they are wearing a hood and a blue uniform, minus the hood, and they are protected by the code of blue, the color of blue. They are not trained a certain way, and they are not taught a certain way, and they have ideas about how to murder black people and whatnot because of their idea of slavery is connected to their genes, their genetics, it's in them already. So some of them shouldn't even be police, okay? They don't deserve to be police. They have no humanity, or they have no humility, in other words, for humankind. This is about the human race. This ain't about black, Asian, white. It's about every race that they embrace. And when they come in our neighborhood, who they patrol the most? The black neighborhoods. That's who they patrol. 
They don't patrol white neighborhoods. They protect white neighborhoods because they sit in certain posts, but they come in black neighborhoods and they post up and they target, okay, purposely. This is what they do. So I think that they should be held accountable and they should be charged just like a citizen, just like we would be charged if we murdered somebody. They should be charged the same way. They shouldn't be given no amenity. They should be arrested and they should have a bond that they can't make like the black man can't make a bond when he murders somebody. They should be held in jail and sentenced and prosecuted. Thank you, sir. And of course, over-policing is one of the demands of this group as the protest continues on the streets, on the steps of the Wake County Courthouse. But there were eight demands that organizers put out there uh, to the powers that be as they, as they worded it. And one of them was a stop to over-policing. In fact, one of the demands was stop building police, police departments within black communities to avoid over-policing. So look, we gave, you the, we, we, we gave you the view from one of the activists out here. We gave you the view from one of the organists, organizers and just one of the folks, Tabrir, who wanted to stop by and wanted to say his piece. Dewan. Joel Brown there live on the ground for us in downtown Raleigh. Joel, thank you. And this is a look right now from, again, Chopper 11. Uh, we're seeing several dozen Raleigh police officers block the street there at Cabarrus and McDowell. And again, you just see this group dispersing a couple of smoke uh, grenade canisters being thrown into the crowd and shot into the crowd. Just incredible pictures we're seeing right now as the crowd begins to disperse. The, uh, up Cabarrus, there's an Enterprise rent a car there adjacent to the Raleigh Convention Center. And these police officers uh, quite strategically placed here at the intersection of Cabarrus and McDowell because just at the bottom of your screen where you see your downtown Raleigh protest banner, there sits a Raleigh Police Department precinct station. Uh, we've already seen it, it, in images across the country this week of other protesters and demonstrators uh, damaging police headquarters, damaging police stations. The police here blocking, again, several dozen police officers uh, having that crowd dispersed back towards Salisbury. This is all happening right now in downtown Raleigh. Again, you have that enterprise there across the street from there is the Raleigh Convention Center. You have Pools Pies and Pools Diner. Uh, both currently closed, and even Red Hat Amphitheater, uh, that, that crowd that we heard from our pilot up in the sky, about 3,000 people at one point, and the crowd even beginning earlier today, uh, as small as 900. On the ground also in Fayetteville, we have Michael Lozano. He's been keeping a pulse on what's happening down there in the Sand Hills. Michael, you're still there at the Market House. I can hear that alarm still going off. We saw water coming uh, from that building as well. Uh, that, so it's a controversial landmark there in downtown Fayetteville. Update us on what you've been seeing since the last time that we spoke with you. Yeah, the one, well, the, I mean, the, best, the biggest thing here right now is the fact that there has been a little change in the atmosphere here. A lot more anger, and that anger, like you mentioned, directed towards this market house. As you see, the glass is broken in a lot of these windows. That sprinkler water is still coming out. That alarm still ringing at this time. This building, a lot of animosity towards this building from the African-American community. This was historically known as a place where slaves were sold at a time. And so a lot of people here not really uh, feeling the hurt of seeing this Go right now. The flames have stopped for the most part, but that water is still coming out of there right now. It's definitely dealt with some significant damage at this time. Many people here, when it first started, were, were chanting, burn it down. And so there were people over here that went inside, actually went in there and set it on fire at one point. We did see someone at one point go to the staircase and try to do the same thing as well. One important thing to note from all of this right now, still no police presence, still no firefighter presence at this time. Fayetteville Police Department did go on Twitter and say that they are currently monitoring this uh, situation right now, but they haven't sent anyone out just yet. We're going to be reaching out to them in the next few minutes to see if there is going to be a response to this at this time. But besides the actual market house going down, people have been pretty peaceful. People are just kind of standing and looking as the building continues to just ring and that water continues to spew out at this time. A lot of people have just kind of gathered around. They'll change locations at some point. We'll see uh, the crowds kind of gone towards uh, Hay Street. 
Again, many of them just kind of looking on at the building as it goes down. A lot of animosity towards this. We've had people who come up to us and, and asked us uh, what we thought about it. And I was like, well, what do you think about it? And they said, well, this building shouldn't be here anymore. It should have been gone a long time ago. And so uh, makes sense why a lot of these people are here watching this uh, historically known building that was a place where people did sell slaves at a time to go down. Kind of a symbol of that systematic oppression that a lot of African Americans throughout this country are protesting about, including George. George Floyd's uh, death. So we are continuing to watch this investigate or watch this uh, whole scene kind of play out and see what goes on next. And again, we'll be reaching out with law enforcement and seeing if they have any plan to approach the situation too. But the crowd itself kind of has died down to some degree. There are still hundreds of people out here, but compared to what it was like earlier, it's definitely uh, kind of trickled down in some numbers. Go on. And Michael, I, I just want to clarify if I did hear you correctly, you have not seen any uh, firefighters at all, you have not seen anybody from Cumberland County Sheriff's Department or the Fayetteville Police Department? <laughs> No, no, not at this time. Uh, I mean, it's, it's been interesting. I mean, this thing's been going off the ring. The uh, alarm's been going off. The water's been spewing out. There was a fire at a time here uh, about an hour and a half ago. And uh, since then, no police presence, no officers, no even vehicles or flashing lights. Um, they, they said they're looking at the situation right now. But as far as we know, they, they haven't actually come to the actual market house area. Michael is on a live for us in Fayetteville. Michael, thank you. And what you're witnessing now, uh, Michael, it's actually it's, it's a lot different than what we're seeing in downtown Raleigh, where we just came from. This is the intersection of Davy and uh, uh, Salisbury there. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, yeah, Dave, Davy and Salisbury there, right near the uh, Wake County Justice Center. Uh, we also have Gloria Rodriguez. She's been on the ground since almost the beginning of this planned uh, protest. Gloria, uh, update us with, with what you see, how you're feeling, and just the tone, the pulse, the temperature of the crowd and, and how it's progressed throughout much of the day. Yeah, uh, Dewan, right now we're back at the old Wake County Courthouse. This is where that protest started. Now a lot of folks are coming back here. It appears that this is where uh, many of them are saying this is where it's going to end. Now, it's definitely a different scene from when this all first started. Uh, definitely you can feel the tension. There's a lot more tension right now. People are definitely a little bit angrier at this point in the night. I do uh, have somebody who's with me right now, Tyrell Space, who lives in Raleigh. And I met Tyrell because he was running down this way on Fayetteville Street. It appeared that the police had put out some smoke to disperse the crowd. Can you tell me about what you experienced and why you were running down the street when I saw you? Absolutely. When we were down between the Marriott Hotel and the Sheraton um, to disperse the crowd, to spread everybody out, they did spray some type of smoke. I don't want to say that it was tear gas because I'm not sure, but they definitely did. Um, it did cause a few people to, you know, be trampled by other people. There was one lady that had a panic attack throughout the midst of the situation. We've been completely nonviolent this whole time. We have not caused any problems. We just simply want to be heard. Black men cannot continue to go on the street every day and fear for their life just because of the color of their skin or because of how they come off to other people. We, we have no control over the way that we are born, the way that we look, or anything of that nature. Tonight, we just want to protest because it's not right. We will not continue to be silenced. We will not continue to, to do hashtags and things of that nature. We will go on the streets and we will fight. We will put our legs to work because it, it has to stop. It will stop. Black lives do matter. All lives cannot matter until black lives begin tonight. And Tyrell, you were mentioning that this has not gone violent. I know that Groups kind of dispersed. So some people were kind of marching in some areas, other groups were marching in other areas. At one point, we're getting reports that some people in the crowd, and I don't know you know, if they were with a certain group or what, uh, may have been throwing some items at the police. Now, you saw a little bit of that, right? Can you tell me what you saw? Absolutely. I mean, in a crowd of this many people, it's, in, it's impossible to make sure that everybody is on the same accord. I mean, some people take their frustration out in different ways, and I'm not saying that that's right, and I'm definitely not going to say that that's wrong, because I mean, hey, as you saw in the video, somebody had a knee to their neck in the middle of the street, and nobody did anything. Any police officers around them did anything to help that man as he screamed, I cannot breathe. So I cannot say that some people did not throw things at the police or at the horses or whatever the situation was, but what I can say is that for the most part, that we have tried our best to make sure that this protest remains peaceful, and that we're just simply heard at the end of the day. And you can definitely smell the smoke. I, I saw a woman walking down here a little earlier who was just kind of rubbing her eyes because it was pretty powerful. How did that affect you, the, the smoke? Um, so I was, you know, greatly enough or far away from this, um, from where they were dispersing it at that I didn't feel any of the effects. But you can definitely smell it in the air, the smell from the smoke that they're dispersing to, to clear the crowds. Um, I mean, I personally don't think it's necessary because we, at this point, we have not caused any damage. At this point, we have not done anything to cause any hurt or damage to any 
property or anything because at the end of the day, I don't want to see the city that I call home burnt to the ground. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I just want the message to be heard that we cannot continue to be killed in the middle of the street and no one does anything about it or bats an eye or allows it to be 24 to 48 hours before charges are brought. As a black man, if there's a simple smell of smoke from a vehicle that I am, that I'm in, it stops because of a, a, a not stopping at a stop sign or something. I'm immediately detained, handcuffed, sat on the side of the road. This man was allowed to, to live 24 hours free, 48 hours without being charged for murder or anything. And even at this point, he's only received third degree man and manslaughter. That's not even a guarantee that he'll be put in prison. There's a possibility that he could walk with just simply probation or something. It's not right. We're people, we're, we bleed just like everyone else. We put our pants on one leg at a time just like everybody else. We will not continue to be killed in the middle of the street. We will not be continue to be discriminated against. Now we see everybody right now is in front of the old uh, Wake County Justice Center. We mentioned the crowds have been very big today. Thousands of people are out here in downtown Raleigh. When we first started, there were a couple hundred people. The crowd grew very quickly. And we saw that some folks stopped over at the Capitol. Some folks stopped uh, near the Confederate uh, Monument. Uh, some folks went near the police station on Cabrera Street. Some folks went to Capitol Boulevard. So some groups kind of started breaking off. Tell me about your experience today. Where were you marching? Where did you go today? Um, we started here. The group that I was in, we started here in front of the courthouse. We migrated down towards Capitol Boulevard, and we walked our way back. Um, I'm happy to say that we spread it across the city. This message must be everywhere. Everybody must hear. Everybody must see this. Things must stop because until we get justice, then there will be no peace. There will be no sleep. Everybody, we will continue to put our feet to the, to the ground and continue to do what we need to do to make this situation go away. It can't keep happening. I mean, and that starts, if that's just one person walking with one sign or a thousand people like you see here in front of the courthouse today, something has to be done about it. And we were also mentioning when I first got here earlier today, it was a lot more calm. As I see people have now marched, I feel more anger right now. Do you feel that anger, and what is that anger for? The anger is because of the simple fact that the police have started to, to do things such as the smoke to clear bigger crowds or whatever, just out of fear that things will go left. Until that situation happens, we should not be treated as criminals because this is a peaceful protest. Again, we have not caused any damage. Nothing has been broken. Nothing has been broken into. Nothing has been looted or anything of that nature at this point right now. So we shouldn't be treated as criminals because all we're, again, trying to do is to simply be heard. We were talking earlier, too, very candidly about just your experience as a black man in America. What do you experience that some of us may have no idea what you're going through? Absolutely. As you can see, I'm a darker-skinned black male. And because of the of the, 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 the width of my shoulders and the and the aura that I put off because of just being a black man with tattoos or bagging your pants than most people, I'm automatically feared or automatically looked at as a threat to society. I myself work for a very nice hotel um, here in the area. I go to school. I have never caused any trouble for anybody. So just to simply look at me just because I like tattoos or art on my body or because my pants are bagging does not make sense. It, 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 not equate to me personally. Um, I've been in plenty of situations where, again, just because I may have ran a stop sign or something, the police pull me out of my vehicle, search my vehicle, place me in handcuffs on the ground, force me, just because of the simple fact that they fear that I may or may not be doing something illegal just simply because of how I look. That's not right. Well, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. So the crowd, again, more people kind of starting to get back to the starting spot. Now it seems like uh, folks are ending here uh, in front of the old Wake County Justice Center. And if you look over at the crowd, we were seeing the same thing uh, that we saw earlier. Folks are wearing their masks for the most part, folks are holding up signs. But as we mentioned, there's a palpable anger in the air right now as folks, uh, some of them may have experienced that smoke that we just heard about um so some folks maybe um you know they've been chanting uh but everybody here to to tell their message uh we have a, a gentleman here who has a sign we're live right now on abc 11 you have this sign don't forget george floyd so obviously that's the whole purpose of today's protest what do you want folks who are seeing all of these people out here what do you want what do you want folks to know who are seeing these crowds here in Bali? what's your message Bullshit. We all here getting tear gas. They ain't trying to tear that shit. Like
we got a little bit of profanity there, so we just want to kind of move away because we don't want uh, profanity. But obviously, live TV, we can't always control it. Uh, but again, you know, we're doing our best to be safe. We have this uh, long microphone stick just to try to socially distance as much as possible. We're keeping some distance here from the crowd, which is uh, across the street. Now, if you look over on this way, Davies Street, um, not too far uh, going down this direction is Cabrera Street. That's where you may have seen the images earlier of the uh, what appeared to be smoke that was dispersed uh, by police to try to get that crowd uh, to move. And that's when we saw uh, several people were running down the street, including uh, Mr. Uh, State, who you just heard from a, a few minutes ago. Uh, he was running down the street as were many members uh, of the crowd because of that smoke. And now everybody's gathered here uh, for this protest. Now, earlier we also saw that some folks were over by the Confederate monument at uh, the state capitol. Some people kind of were doing their own gathering there. So a lot of the groups kind of broke off and started doing, um, you know, kind of um, uh, marches of their own or uh, protests of their own. But what I'm told is that a lot of people will kind of end up here and they will continue uh, this protest right here. Dewan, back to you. Gloria Rodriguez, you've been there on the ground for us since about 4 o'clock this afternoon watching that crowd grow in numbers uh, and even the the tone of the crowd begin to shift a little bit. I want to go ahead and give you a quick break. I'm going to give it over to Joel Brown. Uh, he's still down there on the ground. Joel, it's been a few minutes since we had a, uh, a chance to last catch up with you. Update us on uh, what you're seeing there on the ground, what you're hearing, what you're feeling. We made the turn off of Fayetteville Street, uh, came down Davie, and we're at Davie and Salisbury. I, I don't see Gloria in my eyesight, but I can't be far from where Gloria is. Uh, we're on the other side of the sheriff's office right now. Uh, and the first thing that caught my eye was just this this tension in this in this line here of Raleigh police officers, some with with, with their nightsticks, some wearing helmets or, and or riot gear, and and and, and standing against this line of, of, of protesters, all with serious faces. Uh, you see it there to our, to our right as well, with another line. And as we move left, we're going to stay back, but uh, there's some dirt bikes and motorcycles in the middle of Salisbury Street right now. And I think that's where that, where that smoke is rising up from. I, I don't think that's from a, from a tear gas canister or a smoke grenade, because I don't see people running away from it. I believe that's from a motorcycle. People need to stand back, which we are standing back. But this is happening in the middle of Salisbury Street. There's a line of Raleigh police officers. Not, they are not moving towards this. They're talking about that, making the decision. Do we need to get involved? Uh, but yeah, we're starting to see a lot of different groups join into this protest uh, who were not here at 4.30 at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and, 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 and we don't know what all the motivations are. Uh, but I think that's the noise we're hearing, and that's the, that's the smell in the air. It's, it's, it's burning rubber and not uh, something that police have to fly for the protest. October and her sister Nikki are out here with their sign, their Black Lives Matter. We see George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery as, as well. You have been standing back and kind of watching and waiting. First off, why why do you want to be here? Because I'm a black woman in America. I have a black son. She has black sons. I have black nephews. My father is black, and we're tired. We can't kneel peacefully. We can't stand at the corner peacefully. We can't sit in our own homes peacefully and enjoy a bowl of ice cream or lay in our beds without being killed, and we're tired. We're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And we over it. The shit got to stop it. Excuse my language, I know it's the news. But it has to stop at some point. And it's going to end with me because my grandchildren won't be out here doing this shit. We're done. We're tired. I have a son who just turned 10 years old. He just turned 10 years old a few days ago. And now he's not a tiny boy anymore. He's not a little boy. He's fearful. I'm fearful because he's, he's, now he's going to be a preteen. Tamir Rice was 12 years old, playing outside with a toy gun and got shot. My baby, who just turned 10, I've been mourning since Memorial Day, the day of his birthday, because I hate to see that he's growing up and his age, he's getting taller, he's not cute anymore. And that scares me, that my son, who's in fourth grade, I've had to talk to him about why someone would be afraid of him. And it doesn't even make sense. I've had to steal his innocence away when other children can still be 10 and be cute and innocent. But I've had to warn him that you can't walk 
walk in this neighborhood by yourself. Or you can't ride a bike by yourself. You always have to have someone with you. And he's like, Mommy, why? That's not okay. You have white friends. They love us. We can't drive. You, I, it's hard. It, it breaks my heart to have to steal his innocence. Yeah, don't go anywhere. I'm just, I, I'm moving this way because I don't want to have my back towards this crowd. I want to be able to have my eye on it, but I still want to talk to you. Things are happening at, by the moment. Very fluid. This is a fluid, tense situation with, with, with police and with a lot of anger and understandable outrage over what happened in Minneapolis and the history of violence between police. You could have stayed home as my boyfriend. You could, have, you, you could have watched this on television. Why do you want to be here putting yourself perhaps in harm's way? Because I, I think it's, it's so upsetting to see people on social media talking about protecting our children. But they're not willing to come down here and show up for our children. I'm tired of this. Amon Aubrey was jogging. My son is an athlete. My son plays football and he runs track. I tell him all the time, on the off-season, condition your body so that you're ready to get back there on the field. Come fall. And to know that my son can't go out into his own neighborhood and take a jog in peace because of the color of his skin, it's extremely upsetting. And, you know, I just feel like if I don't get out here and say something, if I don't stand for anything, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to repeat history. Hold on, they're, they're throwing water bottles. We're going to move, we're going to move. Dewan, let me toss it back to you here. Some debris is being thrown across Salisbury Street. It looked to be just water bottles, but we needed to, we needed to get out of that. Yeah, Joe, you're doing a great job reporting down there. Obviously, want to keep you safe as you remain on the perimeter. And this is the intersection of Davy and Salisbury in downtown Raleigh, right adjacent to the Wake County Justice Center. You just heard from that mother uh, speak about her son at just 10 years old and what she's having to go through uh, as a mother in, in, in raising a, a young black boy here in the United States. Uh, Gloria Rodriguez, she's also on the ground. And before I uh, get over to, to you, Gloria, uh, where Joel was, he had to retreat quite a bit because some folks in the crowd began to throw some water bottles a little bit different than what you're seeing uh, but again just immediately around the corner from where you are this is happening do you, do you feel that that, that this, the tone of that crowd is beginning to shift a little bit as folks retreat from Davy and kind of make their way toward Fayetteville that's right Juan. the tone definitely shifting from earlier we've been hearing about uh, that some people were perhaps throwing some things at the police and that the police uh, did disperse, disperse some smoke to try to break up the crowd. Check this out. We're right here in front of the old Wake County Courthouse. People are now starting to move again. So we've been seeing folks kind of stopping um, for, for protests, chants, speeches. Now they're moving again. So I'm not sure exactly where the uh, end spot is going to be. But right now they're marching down Fayetteville Street uh, towards Davy Street. It looks like they are going to be turning uh, right on Davy Street. And we saw some of that uh, interaction with the police earlier. That was near Cabrera Street. So they are moving in that direction, but I don't know if they are going to be going to link up with the other protesters or exactly where they're going. But uh, if you look over here, I mean, there are hundreds of people in this area, and we were told that there were thousands of people uh, who were out here all together, some of those groups are dispersing. But now we're told by some of the folks who are uh, walking here that they are going to be going towards the convention center. Oh, no. Wait. Everybody's starting to move. Uh, we are heading towards the um, Eyewitness News Center. Luckily, we are at a safe spot uh, because we're very close to our station. I don't know exactly what happened, but everybody suddenly started running down the street. Uh, I'm wearing a mask, but I can smell. It smells like there's smoke, so possibly more smoke. Did you all see what happened right now? No. We're live something, but I'm not sure exactly what it was. So we're live with ABC 11 right now. Uh, tell me exactly what you saw, because I know you were here, you were at a safe distance, and you were kind of watching it all. What did you see? Just everybody started running like crazy. Um, I don't know exactly what was going on, but they were running, so we just kind of backed up and got out of the way of everybody. We didn't want to get trampled, so... <laughs> this experience been like for you because I can tell you just right now being in this my heart beat is definitely you know heart is starting to beat a little faster because you see the crowd moving quickly and you don't know what's happening how has it been for you being out here today 
it's been great for me actually because my husband's been racially profiled so many times um, with everything going on and it was just our part to be out here. We were sitting on the couch and just saw everything going on and we knew that we needed to come down and make sure that we um, made a statement for everything that's going on in this world right now because it's kind of ridiculous um, everything that these um, police officers and cops and just everybody's doing to all these black people and it's not right and we got to take a stand for it. And what is your name? What city do you live in? My name is Katie McDaniel and I live in Cary. And what about you? What's your name? Jarrett McDaniel. And so uh, you were talking about, you know, some of the experiences that you faced. What, tell me about what, what you faced and why it was so important for you to be out here. Um, issues within uh, Morrisville. Uh, most of my issues have been at work. Um, business trips in Alabama. I was stopped by police officers illegally searched in Morrisville. Um, it, it's been a number of occasions that, um, that my wife has been, you know, usually nervous even. Sorry to interrupt you. Let's take a look. People are running again. So I'm trying to see what's happening and we're trying to pick up. Uh -oh. This is getting uh, quickly very uh, tense. Do you all know what ha what happened? What's going on? Oh, great. What's happening? Yes. Oh, you can see the smoke right there. Uh, there's smoke on Davies Street here near Fayetteville Street. That's why everybody's running. Uh, the crowd is dispersing, so that's what's happening. That's why everybody's running this way. Uh, I could definitely see that smoke. They're throwing barricades up? Or no, they're throwing barricades. So it looks like some of the protesters out here are throwing barricades at this time. It's kind of hard to see because of the smoke. Um, but we're doing our best to try to get a good view. But yes, it looks like a couple of protesters threw barricades. And it looks like that smoke was thrown to disperse the crowd. Folks are now moving. I'm going to have to ask you guys to just clear the, the doorway, please. Clear the doorway, yes. Okay, so we're just making sure that everybody's safe out here. We're trying to clear the doorway. Um, but yes, it's uh, getting very tense out here very quickly. I think we might move in um, pretty soon. We want to make sure we're safe. You see all that smoke out there? Um, but yes, everybody uh, is moving, just running towards uh, the old Wake County Courthouse because of all this smoke over here. So um, that smoke, if you can see, I'm hearing people screaming down the street. I don't know if somebody got hurt, um, but I see a couple, uh, uh, one person on the ground uh, down here on Fayetteville Street on the sidewalk. So there's definitely a lot of concern uh, about that smoke, people running. Uh, you heard earlier one of the uh, people I was talking to said that uh, some people got trampled as they were running. So th this is becoming a very tense situation and, and literally right down the street from where this all started as a very peaceful protest. Uh, we are on this side of the street. Tell me what happened. You, you, you just got smoke? That was tear gas. Man, it burns. I don't know if you want me to tell you, tear gas burns. I don't know, man. I was just standing up there. I guess some crazy stuff went down. Police started throwing gas to make everybody disperse. So, you know, that's just what happens out here. You said what? Where, where were you when this all happened? We was, yeah, we was in the corner, in the middle of the intersection. You know. I don't, I, don't, I don't even know. I mean, it might not have been necessary. We was in the back. It was unnecessary for us. But we wasn't even doing nothing. We were just standing there. All we're here for is to stand in solidarity with all the people that have fall, fell victim to the injustices by the police department. And not even just the police department. Against everything, all the injustices against our people. That's all we was doing. All we was doing was standing there, me and my guys, and we got hit by that. All we wanted to do is use our voice. That's all we want to do is use our voice. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, well, thank you so much. All right, we are going to probably move. Um, there's still still a lot of tension out here again. Uh, you heard from that man right there who just uh, got, he said, tear gas. It's hard to tell if it's tear gas, if it's smoke. Uh, but they were uh, definitely putting that out to disperse the crowd. People started running. And uh, I don't think anybody was hurt, which is good, other than, you know, obviously getting that uh, smoke in their eyes. Uh, but, but we're going to uh, send it back to you in the studio right now. Uh, Dewan, and we're going to just make sure that we're at a safe distance here. Dewan, back to you.
Yeah, Gloria, safety is paramount. Want to make sure you and your photographer are safe. I do want to toss it over to Joel Brown. We had to pull away from him a little bit earlier uh, because Joel was in a location where folks began to start throwing water bottles and other items of sorts. Uh, Joel, we understand you are in a safer location than you were when we last spoke with you. Uh, kind of go ahead and update us as things have began to shift uh, throughout the evening as we've been communicating with you. I'm sorry, Duane, was that for me? I'm sorry. We're right across the street from Gloria on the steps of the old county, uh, the old Lake County Courthouse. Oh, what's going on? Um, crowds gathering. And it, 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 she, she got here. Is she okay? Is she okay? She's not okay. So hopefully we'll get some uh, emergency serum for her. But look, we saw and heard as much as as much as Gloria did, if not closer, that that tear gas that was that was spread into the crowd. We felt that. That's when we moved back, actually moved back. We were in the process of moving further before that because we started seeing large rocks being thrown at Raleigh police cruisers. We saw police in their riot gear move in not long after. And then right after that, that tear gas canister. Hey, bro, pull down the we got more fucking to talk about. Hey, 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 hey. Thanks, guys. Joel, we're going to go ahead and give you a minute to uh, catch your breath. I want to apologize to our viewers for, for what you're seeing. Obviously, a, a, a tense situation. I am hearing that Joel is okay. So, Joel, I want to go ahead and give you a chance to get back to what you were mentioning uh, just a few short moments ago. Move away from that crowd was gathering around that woman who was, who was hurt on the way kind of uh, steps. But just to walk through what happened over the last 15 minutes or so, that large crowd that was at the corner of Davy and Salisbury Street. And I told you, when I, b before you came to us and we were talking to those sisters, October and Nikki, about how different and tense it felt. And it wasn't long before that boiled over into something violent. Uh, large rocks being thrown at Raleigh Police. Uh, we saw what appeared to be part of a sign being thrown across Salisbury Street in, bullets at peaceful in the direction, this man just said they shot rubber bullets in the direction of peaceful protesters. Peaceful and then Jeff, if I see you, let's take a look at what Davie Street looks like right now, just 250 feet away from the Raleigh Eyewitness News Center. You can see Raleigh police in riot gear. They have shut that section down, but that was chaotic about 10 minutes ago. It was a mass in tear gas. We'll show you that video later if you guys have it back in the breaking news center of those same cops in their riot gear emerging from this gas of, 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 of tear gas. It wasn't peaceful, no. It is no longer peaceful, uh, and it was dangerous. And that's when we got out of there and we moved back towards the Raleigh, the Raleigh Eyewitness News Center. Since we got back there, checked in with Gloria, made sure she was okay. Thank you, sir. We moved across to the uh, to the Wake County Courthouse steps, and that's when I also saw a large object being thrown at the glass. Sorry, guys. Uh, but at this point, the most tense scene has been on Davy Street and and Salisbury, and uh, you can see what right. Uh, where Raleigh Police is right now in riot gear trying to protect that intersection at this point and do not seem to be allowing a uh, passageway from the protesters back down to Salisbury, at least not from this direction of Fayetteville Street to and Joel, do want to give you a minute to catch your breath. We've been monitoring Chopper 11. We've been also looking at some of the different shots that we've been seeing on the ground. Uh, you, you've walked up and down downtown Raleigh all day today. As, aside from any skirmishes with police and, and the feeling that you get now, have you seen anything in, in terms of damage to any other property at all? I have not. It, it, it sounded a few moments ago as if, as if I heard glass breaking, um, but I don't see visible evidence of, of that. Uh, I think when I, when I did hear that, that glass shattering, it might have been the back of that uh, Raleigh, that Raleigh police cruiser. I think that might have been the glass that we heard that was breaking. We're just going to keep it moving down Fayetteville Street here. It's a lot of folks with a lot of messages and they want to get it across and I don't want to draw a crowd but I do want to report the news of what's happening in downtown right now. Uh, Duwan, I'll send it back to you. You come back to me. 
uh, in a couple of minutes. We'll, keep, we'll, we'll let you know if anything changes. All right, Joel, go ahead and catch your breath. Go ahead and reset. Thank you so much. You're doing a great job down there. Please, by all means, stay safe. Uh, we do want to take you right back down to Fayetteville. We've already learned of Market House catching fire. We're able to check back again with Akila Davis. Akila, I can still hear that fire alarm going off there at Market House. We've already heard from Fayetteville PD. They just sent out a message to us a few short moments ago that they've closed uh, the downtown Fayetteville area. What else can you update us with this evening? You know, I talked to the organizer of uh, the initial protest. He uh, called me, and he wants to make it very clear that what's happening here now is not uh, the message that he was hoping to send. This is, he even said it himself, this is a different group of people. This is a different message. He said this is not what he was standing for earlier. Um, you're getting a lot of look. As you said, Dewan, fire alarm is still going off in downtown Fayetteville. And as a matter of fact, before you took me, I just walked back over to our photojournalists and protesters were on the other side of the market house. The, they, they had essentially uh, lit an American flag on fire. So um, that is the noise that you're hearing. Um, still a lot of folks out here, a lot of cars staging. I'm looking at signs right now that say justice for George. Um, again, it, it, it's still a very active scene in downtown Fayetteville and it looks to be growing. Um, you said Fayetteville police, they might be on the way. We, we haven't seen them just yet in this area at least. I will say that they are surrounding uh, the area um, in terms of like blocking off traffic, but they have not come to this piece here. So I guess we're waiting for that. Um, I smell smoke. Uh, I'm not entirely sure um, from where, but go on. And Akila, I do want to ask you, since you're out there and that, that crowd can be rather unpredictable, what, what are you and your photographer doing out there so we can let our viewers know what exactly are you doing to stay safe? That's a great question. We're, we're staying as far away as possible. Um, i got to be honest with you, from time to time, folks start running, and that is cause for concern for us because that means that we have to be careful. We're, we're, we're staying vigilant. We're, we're watching our back. We're not quite sure what is going to happen. So we're staying away as, as far as we can. And, uh, and Keila, I also want to ask, I mean, you, you spent some quite a bit of time down there in, in Fayetteville. You're well aware of the market house. Have you had any sort of uh, conversations with people about what that particular landmark means to them as they are voicing their, their anger, their frustration on the heels of racial injustice and what we saw earlier this week with George Floyd? Well, you got you to gotta, you know, really think about the situation, Dewan. The people that are down here, as I, as I stated, this is a different group of people who were, you know, out earlier. This is a entirely, from the organizer himself, he said, this is a different group. So that being said, that means that these folks, as, as far as they're concerned, every time, you know, they light an American flag on fire, you know, the, the crowd erupts in cheers. This is a different group of people. So yes, I understand what you're, what you're getting at. And, and while the market house has, you know, significance, the people here uh, want to see it go. Akila Davis live on the ground for us in Fayetteville. Akila, thank you. Uh, we do want to check back in with Gloria Rodriguez. Gloria, I'm, I'm hearing you're in a much sick location than where you just were. Uh, go ahead and update us on what you've been able to experience in just the last few short moments. Uh, yes, sir. right now we're in front of the Eyewitness News Center over on Fayetteville Street. Now, you may have seen a few minutes ago while we were standing here, the crowd started running onto the sidewalk here on Fayetteville Street because there was what appeared to be smoke that have been set off by police to try to disperse the crowd. So people were running this way. It was very tense. Um, it's calmed down a little bit since then just because the crowd has moved on towards uh, Davy Street here on Fayetteville Street. So it's not as tense as it was a few minutes ago, but we're constantly on alert just because uh, things have really shifted throughout the evening and uh, the crowds have been marching. Now there's suddenly a uh, vehicle that's driving down the street, which I'm not sure why because I thought they had blocked off the street. Uh, and there's a crowd down at the end of the street, so hopefully everybody stays safe out here. Uh, but I did meet this group of young women today from Hillsborough, and we were chatting earlier. Uh oh, there's a crowd that's going down. Hopefully they're able to get through peacefully. Um, so you all came. Uh oh, wait, where, are they able to? Okay, everybody's running again. Just, everybody's running again. Um, there's a car that was running through the crowd. Just 
Gloria, I, I, Gloria, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and interrupt you. I want to allow you to get to a place that is safe as... Gloria, I want to go ahead and interrupt you and allow you to get to a place that is safe uh, for, for you and your photographer as folks are beginning to run down Fayetteville Street. Uh, we're going to check in right now with Morgan Norwood. She is live for us in Durham. We're just approaching the top of the 9 o'clock hour uh, when we had already heard, Morgan, that folks were going to be uh, reconvening at this time. Are, are you seeing the crowds start to gather where you are? Yeah, uh, the one, uh, good evening. They are slowly starting to trickle in. We've seen people, uh, you know, of course, the, the same folks that we were talking with earlier. I, I did try to ask, you know, the organizers about what the climate was going to be for tonight. Again, they are anticipating that this will be mostly peaceful. If you were with us earlier, you know, when I was asking him, he did, or uh, when I overheard what they were talking about at Durham Police Department as they have been rallying all evening, you know, he said that he cannot speak for what the Durham Police Department or any other authorities are going to do. But as far as what he hopes and what he wants for the protests this evening and right now in just a few minutes um, is for things to remain peaceful. So again, people are slowly starting to trickle in here at Five Points. I had a chance to chop it up with my sister here. Um, you brought your two girls out with you today. Just talk to me about what you're feeling right now. I know this is very charged, but um, just give me your, your, your real emotion right now. Um, right now, I'm just feeling a lot of pain inside. My heart is heavy. Um, I'm just like, you know, I'm very sad about this, what happened to um, this young black man. It's just, it's just, the, you know, the see it, they keep playing it on the news and to see the way he was just had his knee in his neck and he was telling him, I can't breathe, please. You know, and, and it seemed like that didn't matter to him that he was taking his life. And it's just so sad the way our young black men or even older ones, the way they are just, they're just killing them like they're dogs, like they're nothing. Where is the love? Where is the peace? Martin Luther King got out here in the sixties and marched up and down the street for us black people rights that they stop treating us like animals and yet it is still going on. just told me up because I have sons. I have grandsons. And just to know that somebody doing them like that and all they want is their mother to be there, you know, that 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 was painful. That was really painful. Justice need to be done. You know, why keep letting them get by? Why? Come on now, if it was the other way around you wouldn't, you wouldn't um, feel like that, you know what I'm saying? They, 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 they know they would hang him. They would hang the black man if he did that to someone, a white person. Come on now, they need to stop it. They, need, they really need to stop it. Y'all policemen that's got grudges against these black people, black men, stop it. Stop the violence, stop it. You don't get nowhere like that. But I feel like justice going to be done. It's got to be. Look how they tearing up all the places, destroying the buildings. Come on. Don't destroy the buildings. I understand y'all are angry, but you're tearing up your own town. But I know they hurt me. I know they hurt me. Because I'm hurting, and I don't even know them. But my heart go out to the family. Because he gone there. It's nothing can bring him back. Nothing. For his family, I'm praying for y'all that justice be served. Ma'am, if I can ask you, what does justice look like to you? Justice look like to me is to put him in the jail. I'm not going to say murder him because I don't, you know, I can't justify that. But lock him up. Give him life. Give him life for what he's done. He don't deserve to get that out and do that to somebody else. You know, give him life. He killed somebody. He murdered somebody. Give him life. That's what I would do. I mean, I could judge it. What if I had 